Natty continues spring breakout. Springtime yeah. right around the corner. Sure. It officially starts this week, even though it doesn't feel like it. However, as you're getting ready to redo your landscaping. Yeah, you may want some help from your local pollinators. One woman <laughs> shows us how simple it is to raise your own bees. They're small, but mighty. They can bump a farmer's production, food production, by 30, 40%. Well, these are, um, um, are are mason bees. You can see the cocoons are made of silk. They're a gentle, docile bee. Anyone can do this. Not everyone can raise honeybees. Justina Block is making it a little bit easier to help the environment. She's selling special bee kits with the help of the Cincinnati Zoo. These bee habitats are made of clear cedar, made in Charm, Ohio, Amish made. Uh, they come with nesting block and tubes and it also comes with a release box. With these kits, you can raise mason and leaf cutter bees from your backyard. They're hatching in their hand, and once they hatch, they need to warm up. So they stay in your hand and they stretch, and their wings, they stretch them out, and their legs, and they groom, and once they warm up, they take flight. And don't worry, they are a lot calmer than honeybees. The males do not have stingers at all. Once the females arrive, you can also hold them, as long as you don't squish or trap her, but she doesn't have a barb or a venom, like a honeybee or a wasp. So it's more equivalent to a mosquito bite. And with us today is Justina. And, and Justina, I see you not only have brought lots of good stuff, you also brought Scott Berline with you as well from the Cincinnati I Zoo. Did. Hi. Yes, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so let's talk about this. I think on, it, on its face, people understand the importance of bees and pollination and all that kind of stuff. But I think people are still scared of bees. You know what I mean? They don't, you know, there's don't that that comes stung, along with right? it. Right, right. So how easy is it to talk people into trying to do something like this? Anyone can do this, right, Scott? Anyone can do this. Anyone. And I've literally tried to provoke bees when they're on flowers, uh, you know, on a bit on a busy shrub that's full of bees and wasps in this in the summertime. I'll actually just kind of bat them around a little bit. Nothing. Nothing. They're just they go right back to feeding. That's what their focus that's is. That's their focus. Right? Now yeah. you get near their nest, that's a different story. But okay. Uh, yeah. So this is I mean, this is a really good relationship for, for our yards and the bees. It's yes. beneficial to both, right? Justina, talk Absolutely. about that a little bit. Well, these are blue orchard mason bees. They're native to North America. Mm -hmm. It's a docile, gentle bee, so anyone can do this. Think of it as a hiveless bee. Um, it's, it's not protecting a hive, it's a solitary bee. So by providing a structure and nesting materials, you can help the bee pollinate your, your yard and actually reestablish bee populations where they're, you know, they're suffering as loss of habitat, yeah. pesticides, encourage people to um, you know, stop spraying. And we, we keep hearing more and more about that, about bee populations really, really taking a dive. So let's talk a little bit about this symposium that's coming up and what people can learn, when they can learn all about it. Yeah, this Thursday we're having our Sustainable Urban Landscape Symposium, uh, which is almost entirely focused on pollinators this time. So we have uh, Dr. Uh, Natalie Boyle coming from the USDA out in Utah, mm. and uh, Mace Vaughn from the Xerces Society coming, and uh, numerous other really great speakers. That's this Thursday at the zoo. You need to register today if you want to attend. It's okay. the deadline today. But what a great idea for teaching your kids something about nature, oh, do you think, Justina? It's wonderful. Um, the zoo, I approached the zoo last year and asked if I uh, donated my bees and my structures, would they consider you know, a program about our native bees? And yeah. I said, absolutely. And it just grew from there because the guests could come and the bees were hatching in their hands. So as you can see right here, there are um, Those actually- are the cocoons, right? The, there's a viable live bee in here that's gonna wow. start hatching in the next- In um, all of those? Yes, every single one. Isn't that neat? There's 10,000 nope. in here right now. And that's the houses amazing. are beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yes, they're made here in Ohio. Um, they're Amish made. Yeah. They're out of cedar. They're from sustainable cedar farms. So it's a great, um, it's a great product. Uh, the zoo's going to be carrying these in their gift shop. Oh, good. So they have a, cool. a really pretty a one here. logo on that one. So logo nice. on that one. Um, and what are some of the other things that we have sort well, of up here? Well, some of these are display? nesting materials. So okay. I use these for um, education. Mm -hmm. These are wonderful. These are a natural reed. I don't use paper tubes, cardboard, or bamboo. And the bees love a tubular. They um, go in there and They nest? go in there. Well, wow. they, they can't make their own nesting materials. Okay. So I was just at Ron, AJ Ron, a nursery, and she handed me these, and the oh, and yeah. the bees nested in their 
paper. Um, no kidding, like the little tape, spools yeah, or whatever. Yeah, the rolls. Yeah. And they built, you could see the mud. They need mud. We have plenty of mud here in Ohio. <laughs> so, <laughs> we have no shortage of mud. No shortage cool. of mud. Yeah. Well, it's uh, fascinating, Justina. Yes, I wish can, we had more time, but yes. we'll put the information on the website, or you Thank can go you. to the Cincinnati Zoo and find out more there. Yeah, we'll yes, get yeah. registered for the symposium. We have to do that today, and we'll get that all up at local12.com. Yeah. Guys, very interesting. Thank you so much for having us.